this, everybody, is the Star Gooseberry. It is not related to other types of gooseberries, like the European gooseberry or the Cape gooseberry. This is in the genus Philanthus. I believe it's Philanthus acidus, something like that. Uh, it's actually a close relative to this guy here, the Amla, which I've reviewed in the past. And uh, what's fun about this one is I scrumped it. Scrumping means to steal fruit, basically. So if you ever walk down a sidewalk and you see like a branch hanging over some apples from somebody's yard, just like there for the taking, and you reach up and grab one of those guys, you just scrumped some apples, guys. And uh, in this case, I scrumped some star gooseberries. So uh, yeah, yeah, I am not proud of it. However, <laughs> uh, in this case, I feel like I am justified in scrumping this star gooseberry because this was growing directly above a trash can and the fruit was falling literally into the trash. It was not like just like figuratively being wasted, it was literally falling into a trash can. So uh, I scrumped a couple of, uh, of fruit from, from somebody. So yeah, I pretty much just wanted to tell you about scrumping, because it's fun to say, but, uh, yeah, let's, let's try it. Mm-hmm. Very sour. Not bad, but really sour. It tastes like a really tart white grape. It's a little grassy. Oh, salivating a lot. It's a little grassy tasting, but it does have a nice crisp texture to it. The uh, Amla, which it's related to, is a bit hard. These ones, not so hard. You like actually like, chew into that, although it does have a little hard seed in it <clears throat> that's about the size of like a you know, peppercorn, maybe a little bit bigger. So you gotta watch out for that little guy. I should probably point out that uh, normally people do not eat it like I just ate it right now. Uh, people don't eat it raw so much. They will use it pickled. And sometimes if you go to like a salad bar in like Malaysia, Thailand, you might see this as something to add to your, to your salad. You can use it in a juice with plenty of sugar also to kind of like get rid of that, that tartness. People candy it. It's used for a lot of uh, different preparations, but most of them are trying to get that acid down. Maybe something better to put this guy on, uh, salt and chili powder, which I've been uh, doing in a lot of the videos uh, here in Thailand, because it is uh, a very popular thing here in Thailand. Okay, so let's try it again with a little salt and chili. Put a little bit more on it. It's kind of difficult to get this on this particular fruit. All right. When you add the salt to it, it neutralizes some of the tartness and makes it easier to take. And now that I've done that, I'm also kind of getting this uh, apple sort of taste. Apples and grapes, that's that sort of flavor. And uh, if you're wondering how it compares to the Amla, Quite similar, quite similar. Um, it's maybe a little hard to tell because <coughs> they are at different ripenesses. So this is maybe a little less sour than the star gooseberry, but I think it might depend on, uh, yeah, how, how ripe it is. But the main difference between the Amla and the star gooseberry is just like, you know, the size of it. Hello from the future. So I am in New York City right now and I have learned something very interesting about the star gooseberry that I did not know before. And this makes a lot of sense. So in Thailand, people will grow the star gooseberry tree in front of their home because it is believed that growing this tree repels evil spirits. And this makes even more sense now because Many years ago, when I um, was in Laos, I actually reviewed the star gooseberry there as well. And the one I found there was growing in front of a temple. 
So it, it seems like this is something that people will maybe not always grow necessarily for the fruit, but they're growing it for the tree that is believed to keep evil spirits away. But apparently they don't keep away scrumpers. And um, yeah, honestly, looking back at this footage, I feel like I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, I don't condone scrumping, guys. I made an exception because I saw the fruit like literally falling into a trash can. I'm like, all right, this is fair game. I probably should have asked. So uh, to all the young fruit explorers out there, don't follow my example in this video. That was something I probably shouldn't have done. Saying that, uh, I should point out that star gooseberry is not always easy to find. You know, if I was able to find this at a market, I would have reviewed it from something at the market, but it's hard to find. This is something that very much people just grow in their front yards, apparently. Uh, another way that you might find it, though, is at a store. You know, you might find it jarred at a store, either pickled or candied. Uh, it's a product from Thailand. It has uh, gooseberries, water, sugar, salt, citric acid, and then a whole bunch of preservatives. That's what's in here. So uh, let's give this a try to see what it's like. And I believe how this is used is people just eat it as it is, out of hand, but also they mix it into salads, like people do with the fresh fruit. They have a uh, a bit of a neon yellow color to it. That's a little disconcerting. And the flavor isn't very good. Um, I mean, it's not a bad flavor. It just doesn't taste like star gooseberries anymore. They're not especially sour. Um, like a little bit, I guess, like a two or something. But considering that star gooseberries like from the tree are like a nine or a ten, it's, it's losing kind of like what you would want to use a star gooseberry for. You ever get like canned baby corn? It tastes like that. It does not taste like a star gooseberry. It tastes like canned baby corn water. So I would say that pickled star gooseberries are probably good if you have them freshly pickled. But like this out of a jar where it's got all that like preservative taste in it, yeah, I wouldn't pick it up. So I have um, some good news and I've got some bad news. Uh, the bad news is I bought this with the intent of making something with it. There's a lot of different salads, like star gooseberry salad is a thing. Uh, sometimes people put it in papaya salad or mango salad, things like that. And I was going to do that to see how that tart flavor affected the, uh, the experience of having a Thai salad. But these things don't have a good flavor to them. So I don't think that's going to really be a good representation of what a star gooseberry laced salad would be like. So I'm not going to do that. That's the bad news. The good news is that I have more to share with the star gooseberry. So as I said earlier, people will often pickle it and they'll often candy it. So the pickles in this case are not, not especially good, but uh, the candy is quite good. And I had that not in Thailand, but I had it in Vietnam. A few months after I visited Thailand, I went to Vietnam and over there I had it and it was uh, actually a pretty good experience. So I'm going to share that with you now. Rau á, con mấy xà dâu gia bảo, okay. wine. The wine is from the green one. Yeah. And yeah. what is in the Tupperware? Cái đó là cái dài mất hàm của dâu hả? Mất dâu hả? Mất dâu hả? No, no, no. That's one that jam from the little tree there. Oh, yeah. it's gooseberry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, can yeah. we buy this too? What? You can try first. Yeah. Cho nó thử cái hộp này nhiêu. Very nice. You can try this one, guys. Very cheap. It's a fifty thousand dong for a box. So I am in southern Vietnam right now, and one of the markets that I went to had a candied star gooseberry. So I thought I'd give it a shot. Uh, it's been a while since I've had one of these, so I'm going to try this first. Yeah, that's the stuff. But this is the candied product. So they have basically stewed these in like a dark sugar solution, like a raw sugar solution, to get it to be like this. The texture of that is kind of interesting. It is like a jellied fruit kind of thing, like the fruit that you get in like a fruit cake <laughs> sort of texture. The flavor of this is not like how it is when it's raw. It's a little bit like um, 
maraschino cherries, you know, it's it's got that sort of feel to it, something a little bit not like real fruit in there, even though it is real fruit. <laughs> uh, maybe like a little bit like a stewed plum sort of flavor. It's not bad. It's, it's pretty good. It doesn't taste anything like the raw one. Um, you know, it definitely is not sour the same way. This has got like a 2 out of 10 compared to like a 10 on sourness, but um, yeah, not bad. This would be like a nice thing to eat. They gave me like a toothpick to like eat it with. I think it would take a lot of effort to eat this entire thing. <laughs> but uh, to have like a few on a dessert or something, that would be pretty good. Uh, so I think that's about it for the star gooseberry. Star gooseberry is something that I think is really great just because of how it looks. It looks like a little star. I, I love the way that these look. I like the flavor of it. It's not like you know, remarkable tasting, something really crazy about it, but like a nice little pop of uh, sourness that can be very useful for cooking and making things out of. It definitely has a lot of uses and um, I think that's about it. So thanks so much, everybody. I will see you all next time. I would like to give a big thank you to Smarter Every Day, Bill T, and Joseph McCorkle. They are mega patrons on Patreon.com. Patreon is how I keep this channel going. It is a huge help, so thank you. And to anyone watching who is interested in learning more about how you can support the channel and get some really cool bonuses in return, like early access to videos, exclusive videos, over a hundred of those. Uh, there's even a level where I will send you things in the mail. You gotta check it out. So check out the link in the description below.